Welcome to part one of my Sonos review. They actually sent over so much stuff, I didn't really know where to begin. So I decided to split it up into two videos and start with a walkthrough of my experience setting it up for the first time. With its factory tuning and data center DNA, an Intel 730 series SSD is an amazing choice for gamers and performance enthusiasts. So let's kick this off with WTF is Sonos. Well, normally I would try to put this in my own words, quite frankly, they describe it better than I can. Sonos is an app controlled system that lets you control your music collection from any device and lets you play what you want in any room or every room over your home network. So these are two of their speaker units, the Play 1 and the Play 3, their entry level slash portable unit and their mid range unit respectively. They do have a higher end Play 5 for larger rooms, but I'm apparently too much of a scrub for them to send me one of those. So inside the box you'll find a quick start guide in a variety of languages, a power cord, an ethernet cable, and your fancy new speaker. That's about it. They're about as easy to set up as anything that I have ever configured. Normally I see network device and I prepare to beat my head against the wall for an hour or two, but you actually just plug it into your router, then fire up the app on your phone, which prompts you to press a couple of buttons on your speaker, and it's done nearly instantly. It's so easy that my wife could have set it up almost as quickly as I did. All right, cool, Linus, but what's the point? Well, when you've only got one speaker, at first I'd have said it's kind of like any random Bluetooth speaker. I was using the Sonos app to play music stored locally on my phone over Wi-Fi, and I was a little disappointed. Playback was stutter free, so for just continuously streaming a playlist it was perfect, but the app is just not suitable for managing even a medium sized music collection. Its search functionality doesn't look in your locally stored files, and even just scrolling through your list of songs is laggy and unresponsive. So I kept exploring, and glory! Glory be! On their website, I found out that aside from the usual iOS and Android phone and tablet apps, they have a desktop app too. All right, now they've got my attention. Even though they neglected to put an analog input on the things, they're letting me legitimately control it from anywhere. Neat. Back to the app, I found some more options. You can stream from an iTunes library, Windows Media Streamer, and even better than that for people like me whose music file tags are a mess because they still have music from CDs they ripped with Music Match Jukebox. They have a folder-based navigation schema to just pick songs you wanna play and queue them up or put them in a playlist. This is cool because using it this way, unlike a Bluetooth speaker, your Sonos system can keep doing whatever you told it to do even if you get out of range or your phone battery dies. Okay, but back to streaming my phone's local content again, I wanted to try something and turned off my Wi-Fi midstream. It's got quite the buffer on it, but of course, after a little while, the music stopped. Then I turned my Wi-Fi back on and bam, the music was playing again. So at this point I was like, okay, this is actually getting pretty cool. Depending how you wanna use it, you can make it so that when you get home, your music plays to greet you. And when you go out of range, it stops. Fantastic. So next I added the second speaker in another room. My house has ethernet and power line networking in lots of places, so I'm still running everything over ethernet. In the next video, I'll talk about their wireless bridge and the wireless functionality. But anyway, this is where things started to get really interesting. Adding another speaker is as simple as firing up the app and pressing the buttons again and it's connected within seconds. You assign your speakers to a room name and now you can either play completely different content in each of those places or something I figured out how to do with VLC a few years back after a few hours of tinkering and a PC hooked up in each speaker location. With the click of a button you can group them together so the music is perfectly synced in every room as you move around your house. It's great for staying in your groove when you're cleaning and this is exactly how I could see myself falling into their trap. Just keep saving pennies and adding speakers until the whole house is hooked up. Damn, what a great product. But it actually continued to get better. I actually just recently finally got around to picking up an antenna on Amazon for my receiver so I could listen to the radio. I'm so old. And now that feels entirely pointless. With Sonos's integrated tune-in internet radio support, yeah, I don't need that anymore. The in-app search, Still sucks, but I was able to manually navigate to all my favorite stations, local and otherwise. In the search's defense though, it does manage to find podcasts like Twit, so I guess it's not totally useless, but I still found myself yearning for another option. The app is okay. 
I mean, it's got a four plus star rating on the Play Store and the advanced options are pretty comprehensive. So as a setup tool, it's fantastic, but I was continued to be really disappointed in its lackluster integration with the rest of my Android OS. Little things like, unless it was in the foreground, pressing my volume up or volume down wouldn't change music, but my ringtone instead. And I found myself really wishing that I could use another app for music management and then just stream it by clicking a little button like with my Apple TV. And after some more digging around, I found it. Now, clicking add music services in the app just brings up a bunch of lame stuff because unlike the rest of the developing world in Canada, we don't have cool streaming services like Amazon, Pandora, and Spotify. Services that appear to be what Sonos made these products for. But then I discovered the best thing ever. In the last couple of months, two things have happened. Google Play Music launched in Canada and Sonos integrated it into the Google Music app so you can use it exactly the way I wanted. You just have something, you know, running on your headphones, you press a button, boom, it's playing over your Sonos system. I'm about as happy as I could be. I actually just signed up for Google Music's, music's, music's premium service and uh, it's like the best thing ever. I control music volume naturally, I can properly navigate my local content, I can stream content, it's fantastic. This is one of those very rare products that took about a day to convince me to legitimately change the way I go about my daily life. Not many things can do that. But if all of this sounded like a Sonos commercial up until now, I guess this is the part where they decide not to slip me that Benjamin for my review after all. I strongly disagree entirely with Sonos's use of the term hi-fi to describe these speakers. I've only used the Play 1 and the Play 3 so far, but while the speakers themselves might actually be fine, what Sonos calls warm, full-bodied sound is apparently equivalent to what I call tuned for the beach generation with overdone bass, a little bit of treble, and a mid-range that goes way beyond veiled. And unfortunately, the EQ settings are one of the weakest points of the advanced settings within their app, so with only simple bass and treble sliders. So I couldn't even really find out if the speakers are better than they sound. I mean, I guess there's good news though, if you're one of those people who's willing to spend way too much for an actual hi-fi experience with better amps, DACs, and speakers, they're, in my opinion, unjustifiably expensive given they seem to have the same functionality as the other stuff, but without an actual speaker. Connect series lets you add your own stuff to your Sonos setup. But most people, myself included, likely won't care enough to bother with that expense. If you're not cranking things up, I have to grudgingly admit that the warm sound signature works really well for background music, which is exactly what I personally intend to use my Sonos gear for. So I'll probably just stick with the speakers. And I guess that's it. That's how part one of this review ends. Sonos' gear, particularly the software, is just so different from other solutions that I've tried for managing audio around my home. It is such a joy to use that throughout the entire experience, I was able to enjoy my music as I tinkered with it. And not once did it frustrate me to the point that I needed to stop working on the review and go do something else for a little while, something that happens a lot. Highly recommended so far if you've got enough shiny pennies to afford it. In part two, I'll be adding the wireless bridge and some more speakers to the home setup, and I'll be hooking up their play bar to my media center with a couple of play ones linked up as surround speakers. Let me know if there's anything else that you'd like to hear about. Thanks for watching part one of my Sonos review, guys. Like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, leave a comment if you have, well, comments. And of course that thing I just asked you to comment about, comment about like, 10 seconds ago, you could leave a comment about that. If you like our videos, please do check out the support us link in the video description. You can buy a t-shirt, you can give us a monthly contribution, you can change your Amazon bookmarks to ones with our affiliate code so that every time you buy anything like dental floss, uh, we get a small affiliate kickback. It really does help us out a lot. Thanks again for watching guys. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips.